Hello and welcome to a new Blender developer sneak peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'd like to show you in this episode many improvements in the crease pencil area, several new nodes and render features and painting improvements. This episode concludes the overview over most of the features that were introduced in Blender 2.74. If you'd like to support me and learn Blender in depth, then buy my German book Blender 2.7 Das umfassende Handbuch. If you'd like to see it in English and you are a professional translator, then please contact me. I'm searching one. But now let's look at all the beautiful new features in Blender 2.74. So let's first look at the new crease pencil stuff. And there's really a bunch of new improvements here. Um, I'd like to rush a bit through it because uh, there's so much in there that you could um, easily do a complete sneak peek for it. But to show you quickly what has been changed, I prepared a simple, beautiful drawing like you see here and um, in this drawing I'd like to demonstrate those features so first of all let's uh, lock all those layers so I can only access the head and then I'd like to show you the copy and paste for stroke segments so when you are um, in the edit mode by just enabling editing here and then um, selecting everything by hitting A then you can control C and control V and as you can see here when I disable the proportional editing that easily duplicates your uh, layers your drawings so that should be a really cool thing when you have repetitive actions that you'd like to or repetitive objects that you'd like to um, place somewhere in your scene and uh, in combination with the proportional editing tool where you can then transform those objects to a certain degree and uh, to influence the uh, to make the influence bigger or smaller i think that's a really cool thing for repetitive object cloning or something like that the next thing is the copy active grease pencil layer and for this i'd like to revert my changes here and uh, I'd like to show you this on the, for example, on the shoes. Yeah. So let's go to the shoes and then just hit this button, make a copy of the active crease pencil layer. And when we disable now the, um, the proportional editing and select something from the shoes, from this layer, then you can see that those are duplicated. You could have uh, duplicated that by just easily Ctrl -Z C and Ctrl V as before. But when this layer has uh, several objects and you'd like to have a complete copy of the layer, then this might be more handy than Ctrl C and Ctrl V and before selecting everything with A. So that's the second thing and let me revert that as well. Now back to the start and uh, as you can see here already we got color swatches now for the fill and the stroke color as you can see in the outliner it's displayed there too so every every um, every data block has its own stroke and its own f own fill uh, swatch and um, apart from that, you can now cr uh, control your eraser size in the edit mode. But you have, don't have to, uh, you don't, you don't need to have the continuous drawing activated. Therefore, just hit F, and you can now set your uh, er eraser size. As you can see, when I'm holding D and the right mouse button. Uh, Ah, yeah, I should maybe activate one layer first. D and the right mouse button, then you see that I can easily erase this layer. And if, if you would uh, like to erase, erase more, then just increase the eraser size and it can be done quicker. So the last feature is, oh, poor guy, he has no shoes anymore. But the last feature is now the select linked with uh, the key L. 
And that's uh, similar to the modeling section, um, the, the normal modeling, polygon modeling in Blender. So just uh, lock this shoes layer that is empty now and enable this sketched body layer. And then as you can see here, I can easily um, select those points. And if, you are, if I'm um, pressing L now, then all uh, linked points to this all uh, points that are linked to this line are now selected so in this on on this way i can very easily select everything that is connected to a point and then for example transform it or rotate it or scale it or something like that so before uh, this gets even worse with this uh, image I'd like to quit now and um, encourage you to try all those features out. It's really awesome. It, it makes so much fun if you started to play with it. And we're going to look now at the nodes and the rendering improvements in Blender. At first, we're going back to our good old Blender internal renderer. And the Blender internal renderer has a new node, the Gamma node. This gamma node um, is doing the following. Let's just render something. So this one is the rendered result by with a gamma value of one. And let's backdrop this image so we can see immediately what we're doing. And now if you increase the gamma value, you would think that it's now uh, brighter, but it isn't because um, it's the other way around. Um, the gamma node is the um, uh, what you what you enter is the gamma value that the image has, and not the value that it is supposed to get. So what you would do if you'd like to have a gamma value of of one point of two point two, for example, is you would enter one divided by two point two. And then you would have the correct gamma value. That's a bit weird, I think. But uh, if you think closely about how those uh, things are getting implement implemented, then I think it makes really sense. But um, you have to know that because otherwise you would uh, guess which values you have to enter there. So that's the Blender internal gamma node. And then we got a new, um, a new docu documentation node that is cool too, because that's um, in the frame node. So let's make that a bit bigger, this frame node. And then let's uh, and, uh, open up a new text uh, text. Let me just move that and you um, how it's called text editor, right? And this text editor um, is the source for this uh, frame node. Let's just name that doc one, like you see here, doc one. And now let's let's enter some text here and select this doc one in the frame node when you go to the frame nodes properties here and then you select doc one then there is the text here label size uh, adjusts the text size and if you enable color then you could color the frame uh, the frame again as you would before but now with text it's I think even more helpful yeah and that's the uh, the documentation node so if you'd like to add notes to your uh, node tree then this is the way to go the next thing is the pointiness well you uh, pointiness uh, geometry output and as you can see here I prepared a simple scene already this that uh, pointiness output is found in the geometry so input uh, geometry node that is the one you need and uh, what this is doing is pretty fancy because the pointiness output says which um, which value two adjacent faces form 
So when you get a stone like here, then you get those peaks here, there and there and there, and everywhere where those faces match and form a peak like this, there you would be the pointiness value bigger than one, uh, bigger than zero. So zero means the faces are flat and uh, an, a value higher than zero means they are forming an, a crease or an edge like this. And with this information you can do very cool things because when I render that now then you can see that I just plugged the pointiness input into a factor here, into the factor input here, and then I mixed two diffuse shaders and I can um, define now with this with the second material how those edges are colored or which material those edges get and uh, via this color ramp I control how strong this effect this pointiness effect is so you could for example say I'd like to have it the other way around so I'd like to color all my normal faces like this and those bump those uh, creases those edges like this one and or vice versa by just um, moving those color ramps um, those color ramps around and I think this one is pretty helpful if you m do any rendering any modeling because with this you can easily um, enhance your renders very quickly apart from that cycles got a new option to map textures so let's just um, and edit, uh, insert a uh, texture coordinate and a text, an image texture, and then let's load up one. Oh my, which one? Leopard. That's okay. So um, I'd like to make a new object there because then it's more easily to easily seeable. Seeable is that a word? Uh, I don't know, but um, let's just take this material again and erase those geometry things. Just we need just one diffuse shader with this image texture and a texture coordinate. And now let's see how it looks. So, this is our Leopard texture and the new um, the new option that Cycles now implements is the uh, texture coordinate from an object. So let's just enter a new uh, empty with plain axis. That should be okay. And now select this empty as the object where we'd like our um, our texture coordinates from then select object as well and then you can see when I select this MP let's select it and I move it around then those texture coordinates are changed accordingly and when I scale the object the um, MT let's just move it here so you see it when I scale it then those coordinates are scaled as well and when I rotate it then they are rotated as well. So that's really cool for um, for making decals or something like this. Yeah, that should be it. Apart from that, uh, and that shouldn't be uh, hidden from you. Um, there is now a motion blur, uh, the motion blur for the plane tracks in the movie clip editor possible. So when you got plane tracks and you have motion, you have seen where you got big motion blur around your plane track, then you can now do it with cycles or with blend internal and do um, motion blur. Sebastian did a video in the uh, new release um, section in the in the video release section of our release logs so just look at that for it and um, apart from that our constructive modifiers uh, now trigger deformation motion blur so if you have a band modifier or something a simple deform modifier or something like that and you animate those values then you have deformation motion blur now so with this set we are going to look at the painting stuff now and then 
only a few minor features and we're done. But before we look at the painting improvements, I'd like to show you another modifier and that is the normal edit modifier. And this, um, this uh, tree has been created by an author, author I didn't uh, found anymore because I downloaded this file from um, the release logs, I thought, and was searching for him, but I couldn't find it. So sorry if I didn't mention you here now. Um, but the example is really good because when you look at this modifier and disable it, and you'll see that all those planes, all those planes that form the uh, leaves of those uh, of this tree, are shaded in a different way. So when you rotate the tree, then you can clearly see where one plane starts and the other plane um, stops. So it's not very uniform. But when you enable this modifier, this normal edit modifier, then you see that it's more unified shaded. And um, this modifier is um, is uh, altering the the um, vertex normals. So when you enable the normals here, the vertex normals, and you disable the modifier, then you see that those, for example, those normals here, those vertex normals, are standing like this. When you enable it, then it's unified in one direction. Uh, and as you can see here, radial from a starting point. So the starting point can be set with this offset here. And as you can see here, the uh, normals, the vertex normals follow accordingly. And the same naturally for Y and Z, as you can see here. And there is there are, there are two options at the moment, di radial and directional. So um, you, you would have to supply one uh, target object that is used to affect the normals. But I'd like to show you only now the radial stuff. You could um, look at the directional stuff for yourself. And that's very helpful for um, exporting models to other game engines because, because that's then more unified and better looking. If you are wondering why those um, why those leaves are surrounded by white lines, then you can uh, easily change that by going to the Blender User Preferences under System, and there is this Clip Alpha uh, slider. And when you increase that, then you'll see that the alpha value is a bit like the dil dilate erode node in the um, movie clip editor or in the comp compositor um, is the alpha then increased so that the white lines disappear completely. So maybe that will make your scenes a bit more pretty. I thought I will mention it here because I wasn't aware of this option either. And now let's go to the painting additions. The first thing is um, how did I set up this scene? And that's pretty easy. I just enabled shadeless and switched to the uh, textured mode. This one is a simple cube, as you can see here. I then enabled uh, a new paint slot. When you add a new object, then you have the under tools there, add a new, add new paint slot. And then I was almost ready. I just enabled the, uh, I just created a new texture. That's a very simple one with the, let me just show you with a simple plant texture, then a ramp, because I'd like to have a simple line here uh, that I that I use for my drawings now. And uh, that was it. I use a gradient, but this is not working with the texture. So ignore that. And I'd like to show you now what is possible with this with those settings and the rake option because previously you could enable rake or random now you could enable both but to show you to show you why this is helpful i'd like to show you the rake and the random first and then i show you uh, how you could use them together so the first thing is the rake brush and the rake brush is doing the following it's always uh, evaluating how I move my mouse and then it's doing a spiral so 
wherever you paint, you could do such great spirals. So that's already pretty cool, and I love this brush, really. But um, even better is it when you use random and rake. So what's random? Random is randomizing your, pro your stroke. So if you move your mouse a bit and draw, then you got random uh, oriented uh, brush strokes. So with this slider here, that's new as well. Um, you can limit the the randomness. So when, as you can see, it's much more even now. And when you enable both with a pretty sl uh, pretty s uh, simple and uh, small random value, then you can see that you could do a bit more variations with your rake brush because it's not so even anymore and that will help you on your drawings a lot so that's a cool option thanks for this anthony and um, the next thing that you are capable of with the new blender release is the um, the normal text draw then use gradient off let's erase this texture so we got a normally normal uh, paint uh, paint brush here and then i'd like to use uh, a line so i'd like to draw a simple line like this and when you hold control now then you could constrain this line to 45 degrees in 45 degree steps so this is very helpful too if you'd like to draw for example bricks or something like that then you could constrain it now and that was wished from one of our users and Anthony uh, enabled that for you so the next thing is cavity mask paintings and if you uh, remember maybe what we uh, we were talking about um, before that was the pointiness output of the geometry node in cycles and anthony was uh, really anxious and he said okay i can do that too on paint and therefore he, uh, we have this uh, the slots now let's just add a new one and delete this one and then you go to the options and say I'd like to paint a cavity mask and that's doing exactly the same as you would um, wish when you are using the pointiness input because when you paint now then all those um, those adjacent faces that form a angle angle that is higher than a certain amount or a certain degree uh, are getting painted as you can see here and everything beneath this angle uh, below this angle is not painted at all so you could now paint depending on the angle of adjacent faces and that is really so helpful when you are doing stuff like rocks or something like this and yes you can see here it uh, results in a really beautiful texture for uh, games so use this option it's really amazing and with this um, curve you can define how uh, what is considered to be painted as you can see here when i'm increasing this slope or this curve now then much more is painted and um, decreasing this again means much less is painted last but not least we're looking at some minor features and the first thing is here the playback the follow playback um, attribute here and when you enable that your playhead is automatically uh, zooming or, or panning your view um, as as the playhead gets out of the view so that is very interesting for all your animators or um, guys that are doing animations and like to follow your animation permanently and 
apart from that your uh, compositor or uh, for the compositors out there the compositor is now using much less memory than before so you could uh, composite 4k and everything else much more easily with, without crashing your pc and at, uh, as a last thing and that was wished very much by many users over the time we got now the possibility to set our undo steps to 256 that was i think it was before only uh, capable of holding 128 steps and now it's doubled or well, only f 64 i don't know really but um, now it's much more and so it should be enough for all your cases that was the blender developer sneak peek already the next thing uh, next one will be over the improvements in the current development series and i think that the next one will be about 3d all about 3d because the multi-view branch has been merged i hope that you had fun subscribe and uh, share this sneak peek and we we'll see us next time bye